Okay, week 16. Okay, let's sit quietly. What do we start with? We start with prayer, don't we? Yeah, Simon's on the ball. Okay, let's pray. Close your eyes. Hey, we'll sit properly. Good boy. All right, thank you, Lord, for gathering us here. I may pray that you help us to learn the story of Job. And maybe there's a lot of good lessons there. So I pray, Lord, that the children will enjoy the story and uh, enjoy the activity later. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good. Okay, sit quietly. Pay attention when the bishop's talking. And what do you do when you want to say something? You want to ask something. Timothy. That's it. Very good. Okay. Book number 18. Who knows how to say this word? Simon. Job. Job. That's right. So it's not job. It's not job. People say his name wrong. They say job. You know, it's like if somebody said your name wrong and they called you Time Moti. No, it's Timothy. Job. That's the name, not Job. Book number 18. All right, I've got some pictures for the story. This is Job. So if you don't know the story of Job, Job was a man that lived a long time ago. And he was a very godly man. Very godly in God's eyes. So he was, what does that mean? He's very good. He's a very good man. He liked what was good and he hated what was bad. What was evil. And you know, he had seven sons and three daughters. So ten children all up. You know, very happy family. He's with his children and his wife. He was also very rich. If you know Job, Job was one of the richest men over where he lived in the east. Had a lot of cattle, a lot of sheep and camels. So he was having a very prosperous life. And he would often sacrifice to God because his children would go and they would you know, eat and they would celebrate, they would have parties. So Job said, oh, just in case my children do something wrong, you know, if they, if they do something wrong, I'm going to give God an offering to intercede on their behalf. And he did it all the time. So not only was he a godly man, he was also a very godly father. He was praying and interceding for his family just in case his family did wrong. You know, so it'd be like if mommy and daddy are praying for you guys. Make sure you guys, you know, if you guys do wrong, then we can intercede on your behalf. So that's what Job was doing. Now who's this? I don't know if this is what Satan really looks like, but this, this man here represents Satan. So there was this event that happened in heaven. All the angels came and presented themselves to God. Satan is not an angel, but he was there also. So they all came to present themselves before God. And God asked Satan, what have you been up to? And Satan said, you know, I've been walking around up and down through the earth. You know, as he do what Satan does, you know, he, go he walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And God says to Satan, have you seen my servant Job? You know, he's a, he's a very good man. He, he always does what's right. And you know what Satan says to God? Yeah, well, he only does what's right because you've blessed him with so much. You've given him all this cattle and his family. And he says, you know what? If you take all that away, I'm sure he'll curse you. He'll, he'll turn his back on you. So God says, all right, let's test Job and see if Job does that. So he says to Satan, you can do whatever you like to Job, you just, but you just can't touch him. You can't touch Job. So Satan goes to go and test Job. And Job finds out from his servants that people come and take in all his cattle. Another servant comes and says all his sheep have been killed. And another servant comes and says, all his camels have been taken away. Not only that, when his children 
were partying and marrying, there was a strong wind, so Satan sent a strong wind to break the house down. And the house fell down and killed all his family, all his children. You can imagine what Job is thinking at this point. He was very sad. But you know what? You know how Job reacted when he lost everything, when Satan took it all away? This is what he said. He worshipped God. You can see here he's bowing down, praying to God and worshipping. And this is what Job said. Job chapter 1, verse 21b. This is what Job said. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? You can? Imagine if everything was taken away from you. Think about all your toys, all your nice things. If they were all taken away from you. Do you think you'd be happy? Oh, it'd be very hard to be happy, wouldn't it? But Job, was he still happy? Yeah. He said, the Lord gave and the Lord so he said, God gave me things. God took them away. But he still praised God. Let's read this together. Job chapter 1. Verse 21b, the Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away, blessed be the name of the Lord. So this is the attitude we should have, like Job. When things are taken away, we still have the right attitude. So again in heaven, what happens? The angels come to present themselves to God. Satan's there as well, second time. You know, and God says to Satan, have you seen Job? Even though you moved me to do all these things to him without a cause, yet he still does what's right. And Satan says, you know what, skin for skin, if you, you know, he still has his health. So if you take that away, I'm sure he'll turn on you. So mm -hmm. God says, you know what? Let's test, let's test out Job. You can do what you like to Job, only you can't kill him. Okay? So you know what Satan goes and does? He goes and gives Job all these boils on him. Itchy, itchy boils. Have you ever had a mosquito bite? Well, imagine if the mosquito bite... Oh, you've got one? Imagine if the mosquito, mosquito bite had pus coming out of it and they were all over your body from head to toe. That's what Job did. So he had these sores and then he had a pot shirt and he was scraping his sores. Oh, it was terrible. Even his wife turned on him and said, why don't you just curse God and die? And you know what Job said? You speak like a foolish woman, like the foolish women speak, saying things like that. So even when Satan did this to Job because Satan didn't know that uh, Job didn't know that Satan was doing this to him. He didn't know what was why it was happening to him, but he never said anything silly about God through all this. Now, while this was all happening, Job's three friends came to him. I forget their names off by heart: Eliphaz, I think Bildad, and something, somebody else. His three friends come to him to try and comfort him. Because if you think about it, Job doesn't really know what's going on. Why is all this happening to him? So they come and they spend time with him to try and comfort him and talk about why this might be happening. And Job and his three friends go back and forth as they, you know, the friends accuse Job. Surely you've done something wrong for God to do this to you. And Job is saying, I haven't done anything wrong. So you read chapter after chapter in Job, this conversation between Job and his three friends. And when Job and his three friends, they can't figure out what's, why this is all happening, then Elihu comes. He's a bit younger than the other three friends. You can see they're a bit older. He was younger. So then he pipes up and says things to say, you know, surely Job has done something wrong. And this is why it's happened to him. So eventually, after they're talking about why these things might have happened, you know, Job and his three friends and Elihu, God shows up in a whirlwind. And God is not happy 
with what the friends and Elihu were saying because they were saying things against God and blaming God for things, whereas Job didn't. So when God came, God told off the friends and Elihu, but Job's heart wasn't 100% right either. So what happened? God started to ask Job questions. Ask, asking things like, oh, there's a car going past. Is it an ambulance or a police? Yeah. So God starts asking Job questions. Starts saying to him, well, where were you when I created the world? Do you know how this works? Do you know how that works? Come on in. Showed him the animals. He said, you know how the hawk flies? Who gave the ostrich its wings? Just ask Job question after question after question. Job didn't know the answer. Because what was God trying to show Job? God was trying to show Job that Job didn't know everything. And he had to trust God even when he was going through hard times. He also showed Job this animal, the hemoth. So a lot of people believe Behemoth was a sauropod dinosaur because he had a tail that moved like a cedar and it was the biggest animal God ever created. Land animal, that is. Because in the sea, there's even bigger animals, isn't there? Like whales. And on the land, Behemoth was one of the biggest. So this was to show how powerful God is. But not only that, I don't know if this is what Leviathan looks like, but I just thought this was a cool picture. Some people believe Leviathan was like a fire-breathing dragon. Isn't he scary? Well, you know what God says about Leviathan in Job? He says, if Leviathan is this scary, imagine what it's like to meet God. Wouldn't God be even more scary if he's the one that created Leviathan? So God shows Job all these animals to teach Job a lesson. Job, you don't know everything, but God does. Because Job didn't know why all these things happened to him, but God did. But God was trying to teach Job, even though you don't know why all these things happen, you just have to trust him. You have to trust God. So Job, he repented, right? He said, oh, you know, I'm wrong. I, I, I do. I don't know. You know, I don't know everything. But... You know, God showed him mercy, you know, so he asked Job to do a sacrifice for his friends, for the foolishness of his friends. And even though Job was never told why all those things happened to him, God restored, gave him back a family and his things, and that was the end of Job. So even though he went through hard times, God was merciful to him at the end and restored a lot of his things. Simon? After that, that God gave him twice as much. Yeah, you're right. So even though Job never really knew why it happened, God was merciful to him at the end and graceful and restored his family and like Simon said, yeah, gave him twice as much. Okay? So just like Job had to trust God, even though he didn't know all the answers, we have to trust God as well, don't we? We don't know all the answers, but we know we've sinned against God. God knows what's best. And just like Job trusted God, we need to trust God. We need to trust Jesus Christ so that we can be saved and we can go to heaven. All right, our activity today, um, let's stand up and go to the back. We're going to make a balloon dinosaur and then you guys are going to draw on it. Just like when we look at behemoth, when you guys look at your behemoth, you can remember how great God is. All right, let's go to the back.